Hey, Springs Church, this is William Bowers. Today we're discussing Ephesians 6, which is often called the Armor of God chapter. God has given us spiritual armor. It's powerful. It's designed to pull down strongholds. It's God's gift to us to help us secure the victory in our lives. And that sounds great, right? But here's the problem. Most of us rarely wear it. In fact, if we're really being honest, and, and I'm included in this, we often think of the armor as optional, i.e., break the glass in case of a fire, that kind of armor, when it's really bad. Then we'll wear it. Or maybe we casually approach it like a costume for spiritual cosplay, you know, show up at church con, wear the armor, show that you're part of the tribe. A mentor of mine called that kind of thinking spewable theology, and he's right. It's never what God intended the armor to be. It was never optional. And because of it, I think the church has grown weak. We've lost our prophetic voice, and boy, the culture needs us to get that back. That's why we need the armor. The armor isn't meant to be worn occasionally. It's not optional. It's not casual, and it's not a toy. It's lethal. It's meant to pull down strongholds, to take ground, to literally bind hell on earth. Well, maybe you're not convinced, right? It's easy to think of the armor for really spiritual people, like Pastor Michael, or the elders, or those folks that show up at the prayer meeting, they get really loud, they speak in tongues, right? I mean, let's keep it real. I've thought those things, but it's not true. Those are lies, and they're from the pit of hell. God's armor is for every believer, for, for you and for me. My armor is just as important as Pastor Michael's armor. It's just as important that I wear it. It's just as important that you wear yours. If you look back at Ephesians 5 and then into 6, there's a lot of discussion about obedience between kids and parents, husbands and wives, even slaves and masters. And we're going to talk about more of that in a moment. But the point I want to make now is the armor was given to help us obey the Lord. It's not just a tool for warfare. It's a tool for obedience. And when we wear it, it empowers us to obey him in all of our relationships, kids and parents, husbands and wives. Without the armor, you literally can't obey the call of God in your life. You won't be able to. But before we unpack that and how the armor helps us obey, we, we really need to go back and talk about this tough subject. Slaves and masters, I did not want to talk about that when I got Ephesians 6 and was asked to speak on this chapter. It made me really nervous. With everything going on in our culture, I was like, Lord, I do not want this chapter. And God just encouraged me in my quiet times. He said, just go at it with the word of God. Just go at it with the truth. So here's the truth. Paul, a Jew, wrote this. He wrote Ephesians 6. His people, his ancestors, the, the Jews, were slaves in Egypt. Paul wrote Ephesians 6 at a time when the Romans were in power. The Romans practiced slavery. Even the Jews practice slavery. The point is, the Bible does not condone slavery, but Paul was writing to people who were slaves at the time. That was their station in life. He was writing to their masters. That was their station in life. And he was reminding them of something Genesis tells us very clearly from the first chapters of Scripture that we're all made in the image of God, in his likeness and in his character. We are all God's children. We are all valuable because he said so, because we're his kids, period. We're priceless in his eyes. Secondly, the Bible tells us, and Paul wrote this, that there's no slave and there's no free in Christ. Why? Because Jesus is the great equalizer. God is the, the God of equality and justice, not the Declaration of Independence. The Holy Spirit, the very Spirit of Christ in us, makes the mind of Christ available to the whole body of Christ, no matter what color your skin is, which means it's available to all the people of Jesus, who place their faith in him for the forgiveness of their sins. All the people. Equality comes from God. It's sinful beings that mess stuff up. Even believers, even Christians that don't get it right in this life, that through their own sin, they create injustice and inequality. But not the Bible and not God, not ever. God is our creator. He's our author. He's our forgiver. He's our defender, our great equalizer. We are all his kids, and as the song says, we are all precious in his sight. So now let's get back to the armor. And, and the question is, are you wearing it? Am I wearing it every day? Let's talk about three ways that the armor enables us to obey God. First, let's talk about the helmet. 
we clothe our mind with salvation. That's our helmet. And why salvation? The Bible talks about the rich mercy of God that raised us from the dead along with Christ. That salvation comes from Christ. So we're told, clothe your mind with salvation. That's your helmet. In other words, put on the mind of Christ so you can think correctly. Clothe clothes your mind with salvation so you remember who you belong to, right? If you don't put on the helmet, you're going to forget who you are. You're going to forget whose you are. You're going to forget where your value comes from. So are you wearing the helmet? Secondly, the sword. Are you wearing the sword? It's the word of God. The Bible says it's living and active. It's beyond sharp. It discerns the thoughts and intentions of the heart. It tells us what to think, and it tells us what not to think. If we don't know the word of God, we won't be able to think correctly. We won't be able to cut through the lies of the enemy. If we don't pick up the word of God, what's going to happen is we'll pick up another weapon instead. And we'll use that weapon to dishonor him. And instead of drawing people to his name, we're going to push them away. So we need to pick up the word of God. Are you wearing the sword? Thirdly, the shield of faith. In ancient times, the enemy would ray fiery darts down indirectly in an arc. And to defend, you would get underneath that shield and you'd block. The arch was a rain fire indirectly. You would look to the sky, raise your shield and you would stop the fiery darts of the enemy. Think about looking to the sky. That's a blind spot, and we often don't. We look at what's in front of us. But Satan likes to come at us indirectly. He comes at us from our weak points. He loves our weak points. Sometimes those are places that we feel shame, we hide in the dark from, we're afraid to bring things out into the light, right? When we do that, God can kill it, but we keep things covered up. The shield was meant to cover our weak points, but it's not just to extinguish the fiery darts of the enemy. It's also a defensive weapon. You can strike back with it. So are you holding the shield? God's calling us back to the basics of spiritual life. He's calling us to get into battle. He's calling us to equip ourselves for war. But he's also calling us to obey. And we've got to wear the armor or we won't be ready. We have to wear it or we'll be weak and we'll fall. We have to wear it to reclaim our prophetic voice, to bring about change and healing in this world. We have to wear it or we won't be able to obey him. And I want to obey him more than anything. I want to honor him, and I know you do too. And that's, that's why we can't leave ourselves to our own devices. That's why we've got to follow his example. We've got to put on the armor. We've got to put on the tools of obedience. So do it today, do it tomorrow, do it the next day, and then don't stop.